Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Uh, it's a bit of a running trend at the moment, but we're looking at another processor from Intel. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the i5-760, uh, which is an 1156 quad core. Um, and it's pretty much, it's like what uh, Intel did with the 920 to the 930. Basically, uh, they've given you an extra multiplier on the top end, so rather than a 21 multiplier, it's now got a 22 multiplier. Um, and, yeah, basically they've just given you an extra notch on the multiplier, so it's gone from a 2.66 GHz clock to a 2.8 GHz clock. So you still keep the 133 base and it's all done on the multiplier. Anyway, when we've got the 930, it's right, where, in, where it's late, there's loads of bugs everywhere if you want to run looking. Uh, when we got the 930, we found that it, it did seem to overclock a lot quicker, or uh, a lot easier than the 920 originally did. So uh, a lot of you are instantly going to be thinking and wanting to know, is it a better clocker than the 750 was? Well, it's a bit of a tall order, really, because the 750 was a very, very good chip when it, uh, when it came out. But in my experience... Uh, if you got them to around the kind of 4 gigahertz mark, then you were generally looking at a fair few volts, normally sort of north of uh, 1.35 volts, something like that. Uh, you know, it wasn't unusual to hear people using 1.4. Well, as I'll show you in a minute, it's benching at 4 gigahertz behind me at the moment. Um, but it, this is completely stable at 1.25 volts, uh, 4 gigahertz. Um, but most importantly, that's with a 200 bus, um, with a 20 multiplier, but also with the RAM running at 2000 megahertz as well. Now, a lot of people out there that fiddle with these will probably find that you need loads of IMC volts to um, keep uh, you know, the high memory stable as well as a high um, uh, base clock. But I've, you know, I mean, I've had no problems whatsoever. I'm using the Asus Maximus. 3 Extreme and Corsair 2000 MHz GT and it's just been an absolute breeze, it's, it's so easy. Um, again, very much like the 970 and the 930, when you go above 4 GHz it needs the volts just hit and rock it, so, do you know what I mean? It just, yeah, trying to get it to like 4.2 GHz for, for argument's sake. Um, you needed like 1.4 volts, so just that extra 200 megahertz bump, uh, it's just, do you know what I mean, it's not worth it. It's actually running prime at the moment behind me, and I want to show you the, um, uh, the temperatures, because even though, do you know what I mean, the air conditioner's off, it's got warm in here quite quick, uh, because I've, you know what I mean, I've been doing other things, benching uh, another rig which is beside me here, but yeah, it's 24 degrees in this room at the moment, and this process is benching at 4 gigahertz at 60 degrees across all the cores. Um, some of them, do you know what I mean, are even cooler than that. The hottest core at the moment, but it's just gone to 61. And the Prime's been running for a good, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes now. But I will bring you in and uh, show you all this. And then, yeah. Right. Here's CPU said, guys. In the BIOS, we're actually set at 1.25 volts, and that goes up and down depending on the load line calibration, as we spoke about before. You see, we've got 4 gigahertz core speed, 20 bus, 20 multiplier rather, 200 bus. You see the specs for the uh, cache there. It's got 8 meg cache, just like the i7s. Of level three cache, anyway, as you can see at the bottom. And then if we go down to the RAM speed, you can see there that it's it's a thousand, but obviously that's times two, so it's running at two thousand megahertz at eight 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 twenty four. Um, as you can see, Prime is you know quite happily running there, and it's still going. And there's our temperatures. As you can see, the hottest core at the moment is 61 degrees. It's an amazing little chip, really. Right, while I've got you in my hand, I'm going to stop Prime just quickly because I just want to. People always want a visual of. 
what the uh, CPU can do. So what we'll do is we will run Cinebench quick. I'm just going to find it for you. While this is running, the uh, uh, 3D Mark uh, Vantage scores um, with a uh, ATI 5870 at stock. It was 13,000. Uh, I think it was 13,300. Once we overclocked it, uh, the process it was 18,800. So it's a great little CPU. It's definitely one that um, really does benefit from overclocking. I mean with these temperatures, all right, I am using an NHD 14 but with these temperatures, do you know what I mean, 4 gigahertz is so usable. I'll also do a W prime run for you quickly just so you can see it. There you go, that's the uh, Cinebench run, which was when it focuses. There you go, 5.37. We'll do a quick W prime run. Just so you can see. Bearing in mind that the uh, 970 was doing this in 6 seconds. There you go. 9.6 seconds. Yep, the, uh, the crucial one, which everyone's going to want to know, I just need to bring my screenshot up, is my uh, overclock. Now the max I managed to get out of the uh, processor was 4.4 it did need ridiculous volts to get there it just it wouldn't not go any further as you can see that it's uh, submitted and validated by CPUZ and on the Maximus 3 with the 5870 and when I did that run I had the uh, memory running at slightly less uh, just at 1600 megahertz because at 2000 it wasn't touch it wouldn't it wouldn't run basically but it was 4.4 200 um, bus with a 22 multiplier which is the top end of the multiplier right I'm gonna stick you back on the tripod right then guys so you're obviously looking at this because you've got an 1156 or you're looking to get an 1156 and uh, what I would say the, uh, the 1156 market is, is kind of like it's mid-range really, unless you start buying like the, the expensive uh, um, i7s. Now one thing with the uh, 760 is going to be coming in at about 150, 160 quid. Uh, now this puts it 50 pounds away from the i7-860. Now the 860 is essentially the i7 cores, um, but also it brings to the table hyper-threading and a uh, hyperthreading can make an awful lot of difference so do you know what I mean people that are going to buy this are probably going to be on a budget now if you're on a budget clock it because it's amazing definitely a cracking processor um, it runs very cool as well which is something that we need to we need to think about you can get 4 gigahertz do you know what I mean without that you do need to increase the volts normally um, but not by a massive amount um, and yeah, it's a very, very good chip. And do you know what I mean? For 160 quid, 4 gigahertz, do you know what I mean? I could literally talk you through the settings because um, you just need to bump the volts up a little bit. Um, so yeah, 1.25 on the core, enable your load line calibration. Uh, your IMC volts, quite literally, do you know what I mean? 
they will depend on how high you want to run your memory. Uh, make sure your voltage on your RAM is set, make sure your RAM timing is set manually and then bump your uh, the IOH core up a little bit and to be quite honest with you, as long as your C1E is disabled and the speed step is disabled you can pretty much just go in there, 200 bus, set the RAM, 20 multiplier, you should be fine. Um, obviously you need to kind of experiment with this and that is a guide, it's not, you know what I mean, it's not written in stone but that's what I was using, it literally is that simple. Um, get yourself a decent cooler as well because, do you know what I mean, this knock jerk is quiet, do you know what I mean. Uh, the noise that you can hear is actually the, uh, the 5870 that I'm using, but yeah, it's a great little processor. You just, like I said, it is very close to the 860 um, and the 860 although it's now been superseded by the 870 is still a very good processor for 200 quid so you really need to be weighing up what you want but if the uh, if the uh, 760 is all you can afford do you know what I mean don't think that you're you know what I mean you're just having to make do because it is a, still a bloody bloody good processor and if you're looking to start your overclocking and stuff like that it's a very good processor to learn on but anyway we've seen the scores 4.4 top 4 gigahertz easily um, attainable. Um, we weren't really having, obviously, it's not the power of the six cores to be able to like chew through games like Crisis and stuff like that, but it's still very capable. Um, so, yeah, it's quite difficult with these videos and processors because there's a bloody moth in there. Uh, it's quite difficult with the, uh, the processors because, do you know what I mean? I could literally spend ages showing you this and that and, do you know what I mean, games with this and. I mean, it all gets morphed in. You need to know what I really think about it. Um, would I buy one or would I use one for, I would say, if I was building for a customer like a mid spec gaming rig, um, yeah, I think I would actually. Mid, you know what I mean? Not low end, but mid range kind of rig. Uh, maybe not on the Maximus 3 because it's an expensive board, but yeah, I think I, st I still would use it. Nice, quiet cooling, maybe a 5850 with it. A perfect little, you know. Perfect little gaming rig there. So it definitely get, gets the tiny Tom Logan thumbs up and I look forward to some more. Um, but for now at least, because it is getting really, really late and I need to uh, turn this off and get the air conditioner back on because I'm roasting in here. It doesn't help, I've got something benching behind the camera as well. But anyway, this is tiny Tom Logan rabbling like he normally does with the i5-760 giving it a firm thumbs up out.